Welcome to the call public meeting of the Henry County Board of Commissioners for 3.30 p.m. Thursday, March 15, 2012. At this time, I'd like to call the meeting to order and ask for an acceptance of the agenda. So moved, Madam Chair. We have a motion by Mr. Stamey and a second by Mr. Holmes. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. At this time, we're going to move into a, discuss, a discussion regarding the 2012-2013 budget. And uh, I believe our county manager, uh, Fred Aletta and Mike Bush, finance director, will be presenting. Madam Chair, Commissioners. Good afternoon. Afternoon. Um, Deputy County Manager. Thank you. Mr. Stamey had already corrected me. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, purpose of this meeting, I just want uh, this uh, presentation we're going to go through is what I call a process to get ahead of what we're up against or might be up against by the time we get to the dates that we have to um, submit a budget. I uh, just want to put some dates out just to tell you what is ahead of us. You've been through this many times, but just to put it in dates. If I get this wrong, Mike, or somebody. We've got to advertise by April 20th our final budget so that we can have a meeting on May 1st uh, to, for discussion and public hearing, and then um, May 14th again to adopt it. Um, as I understand, we could have other meetings, call meetings, but that is the process as I understand it. So based on that, this being April, that being April 20th and this being March 15th, as you can tell, we've got about a month to get this wrapped up. Um, so as we go through these numbers today, as I said, this is a process. We haven't fleshed everything out. We haven't gone through detail, 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 detail in a lot of cases, but if nothing else with the numbers of where they are, It'll give uh, the board and the public an understanding of where we may end up at the end of this process. So with that, I'll just jump right in and uh, pull up the first slide, which you have there. I can't see that as well as I thought. Are you showing up okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, they, good. They see the same things on my computer. I know, but I can't. I'll just yeah, I um, okay, just a second. We changed this. That's right. First schedule we have is the first couple schedules we're going to review are history schedules, starting with uh, history going back to two, from 2009 up to the present time um, in the present budget that we're in, which is this year's fiscal 12 ending June 30th. You can see that in 2009 our total revenues, and again this is just revenues, and of course when we get to the expenses, having a balanced budget, they'll be totaling the same figures. 2009 our total revenues were 132647000 in 2012, the year we're presently in, our budget is $112,452,000. During the four-year period as shown, we've lost or decreased revenues by $20 million or a 15% reduction. You can see by year 2010, we went, in, uh, went down 5% from uh, 9 to 10 and then another 7.2 from 10 to 11 and last year 3.8. And of course, you can see the dollars in each case. Uh, being seven to uh, almost nine and then another four to total that $15 million. Uh, to point out a couple of items on there in the uh, reductions, you can see that the property taxes, the first line on which we call real, real property taxes, those are the ones the millage have been assessed to uh, for the digest going from 62 to this year, uh, 52 or almost $10 million, $9.4 million reduction. I'm going to have some schedules since a little later that will review the, um, some things with the millage and the, the property taxes, uh, digest if you would, but uh, we'll come back to that in a little later in the presentation. All other uh, taxes in the motor vehicle and other are shown there. Um, and in, a decrease from the period of time from, uh, again, the four years from 8.8 .8 to 7.1 million. Um, for the most part, that is a reduction in personal property, which during that, those uh, from 2009 to 2012, and I'm not going to go in between, I'm just taking the 2009, the latest, uh, oldest uh, number set of numbers to the present time, and that subtraction of 1.7 million is just that, the difference between 09 and 12. Um, that's down 1.7. 
About 1.2 million of that was personal property. And Mike, if you want a specific categories of what those items are. Oh, you know, people used to have a lot of RVs and planes and boats, and those things are now not in their possession, and that's how you lose a lot of taxable value in the real property. I'm sorry, personal property line. Okay, and the other was transfer taxes. There was a reduction to 400000 Transfer taxes, like you say, is transferring deeds and titles, and we don't have a lot of that going on sales of houses because the digest shows that there's really no sales of housing on them. That's what that was. So there, right there is about 1.6 of that 1.7. So, again, that's where that reduction came from the 8.8 .8 to the 7.1. Uh, sales tax, <clears throat> we had a, a reduction in sales tax from 09 to 12 of 20.7 down to 18.3 or 2.4 million. And then um, penalties and interest, um, that went down, as I said. And then the penalties and interest actually between 09 and 12 actually went up by $900,000 from $1.1 to $2 million. So we had uh, quite a bit of penalty and interest collected in this last year, during this current year. If you net those two, it's about 1.3, which is pretty close to the 1.6 difference that you see there. Uh, dropping down to um, uh, charges for services, the uh, $2.6 million. Uh, there's a couple items in there that you can see. In that, that case, our revenues actually went up from 11.5 to 14.2 million dollars. Uh, lighting that we do for subdivisions um, in 2009 were 900,000, and this year they're going to be 1.2. So there's a pickup there, but that's offset again by recording legal documents uh, instruments by 300,000. So that washes itself out. The big item is that between 09 and 12. Ambulance revenues went from 3.1 to $5 million, or an increase of 1.9. Um, and that was pretty much, from what I understand, an increase that was taken in their billing rates in FY10. So the increase started actually back then. And if you take a look across, you'll see that increase uh, popping in. And the other is the tax commissioner fees to uh, all the uh, school boards and everyone else actually has gone up from 2.6 to about $3.3 .3 million. Those two figures, the one nine and the seven, give us 2.6 of that 2.6 million. That's uh, ex to be explained. Miscellaneous revenues, uh, 1.7 um, decrease, going from three million dollars down to a million two. Uh, for the most part, that's all interest income, and uh, we had about 2.2 interest income in 2009, and now we're down to about 76 thousand dollars. So. Uh, for the most part, is, for all of it is in there. Fund balance, as you can see in 09 and 010, there was a use of fund balance, and in 11 and 12, there is none, which is why, of course, there's an 8.9 million reduction from the two years. And then other sources actually is going up to 2.1 or a million three. And Mike, if you want to take that one on the transfers, uh, the various departments. That's on the expenditure side for the other sources. That's the one where the uh, revenue, where we were transferring from 911. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. We, we have an uh, unallocated audit um, that we do, or it's basically an uh, it's a indirect audit done every year. And for the, the commissioners, the county manager, the finance, the administrative portions, human resources, we do work for E911, for stormwater funds, and that's not a, a charge that they receive, so it's called an overhead cost, and that's uh, that's what the majority of that 1.3 million is is an, is an overhead charge to E911 and stormwater funds that we received at the county. So that basically gives you the categories that have been used for many years here to uh, describe the uh, what I call the buckets where the revenue is coming from, with the detail somewhat behind it to show where the 20 million dollars uh, was dropped from. Going to the next one on the expenditures for the same period of time, again, starting with 132 and again ending up at 112 or $20 million reduction in expenditures. Um, as you'll see, um, we have a, a second line item called unallocated expenses. And Mike, I'll let you take that one and you've got the stuff below. Right. Um, back in 2000, I guess, nine, eight, nine. Any vacancies that were in the county and any new positions that were approved in the budget were approved in this unallocated expense line item until that 
position was actually filled. Um, and once that position was filled at the mid-year or end of the year, the board would move that money. We can't move that money until the board does. But we didn't want to put money in a department and have them try to use that money to do something else instead of hiring somebody when that money was set specifically for that hiring. So that's how we had, that's what was done in 2009 or 10 or 9. And in 2010, we removed all of the vacancies um, off of being a funded, a funded vacancy was just now a vacancy, not funded. It would be funded by the board when we hired somebody to fill one of those vacant positions. Same thing on, on new positions. We did not budget them because we didn't know at that point if we were going to have any new hires or things like that. So that's, that's what makes up that um, unallocated. The, the number that's still left in there today, um, that's small equipment that we pool, some education training that we pool. Um, I think that's the only two major items that are left in there today. But again, it's just we used to fund vacancies. Even though we didn't spend the money, we would fund it in the budget, which made your budget higher, and we did not fund them. Still have a vacancy list, and if, a, you, know, if you wanted to hire a person, we can still hire them. And at the time that we come before you to hire them, we do a budget <coughs> amendment to hire them. Does that make sense? So if we start, as, as you can see, we're back to the same $20 million reduction in expenditures to the corresponding loss in revenue during the uh, four years. Starting at the top with legislative and executive, there's 15 departments that are included in that. We'll talk about those later, but it, just to note, there are 15 departments that make up that present $14 million that did go down by 900000 almost a $1 million, between 2009 and 2012, uh, three pieces within those 15 departments. One is the BOC did reduce their budget by $300,000 during that period of time. County manager's budget was reduced by 300,000 and elections was down 300,000. And that being, if you would, uh, an election year back then where more expenditures were needed versus uh, the present year we're in. Um, present budget period we're in, which ends June 30 in each of those years. Um, the next uh, one to highlight then is public works. I draw your attention to 2010 and 2011 in public works. You'll see where it dropped from 11 million down to four, 7 million. And as each of you know, that was when instead of having repaving done out of the general funds, it was done out of SPLOS, and therefore that's where the reduction. And again, that reduction carried through in 2012, so that the 10, from the 10 million back in 2000, almost 11 in 2009 to this year's 7.6 is a $3.2 million reduction. Uh, going down to culture and uh, recreation, which is the library and parks and rec, uh, huge swing of uh, $2.5 million. And Mike, I'll let you if you want. Um, on, on this particular line item, um, in 2009, we would book um, expenses through the recreation department for, for piano lessons, dance lessons, and we would book the expenses that it would cost, but we didn't know what the revenue was, so we didn't really, we guessed at the revenue. And so in 2011, what we decided to do, you know, based on, on you know, board uh, conversations, is we wouldn't budget any expenses nor any revenues until that class made, and so that class would make money or break even. It wouldn't be a loss situation. So what we've done, for example, on uh, piano lessons. We have zero budget right now in the 2013 that we're working on now. There's no budget for expenses, no budget for revenue. If it takes 22 people to make that class happen, people will sign up. When the 22nd person signed up, we will then expend money and get the revenue back in. So that's why we have a reduction. There are several, several million dollars worth of activity here, but we don't book the expense until we know what the revenue is. That's we did. The other piece of that is the library is also in this culture and recreation. And as you are all aware, in the last couple of years, we have reduced our budget 20, 25 percent. So that's, that, that adds to that line reduction. Okay. Housing and development is uh, uh, planning and zoning and the building department for the most part, uh, that budget. Uh, as you can see, it's been reduced from 4.7 down to 2.2 million or a two and a half million dollar reduction over the four years. 53 percent. Uh, the building department uh, uh, had a reduction. In 2009, the building department was at $2.6 million. And last year, with as everybody remembers the layoffs, uh, their department total is 700000 
from 2009 till this year, we've gone from 43 people to nine people in that department for a $1.9 million reduction in expenses. Uh, and PNZ has gone from $1 million to uh, 600000 for a $400,000 pickup. So between the two of them, there's your $2.3 million of that, uh, of that figure. Um, next number I'll highlight is other uses. You can see it's down $1,285,000. Um, let's see, where am I at? That is, again, Mike, on the transfer of capital, if you want to yes. cover that. Um, <laughs> back in 2009, we had $130 million, and we included in that budget, I think it was $4 million worth of purchase for vehicles and other capital items. And in the last couple of years, as you see that number continue to go down, uh, and, and that's the reason why it's because we don't have the money to go out and buy capital items. They're, now we're buying absolutely necessities, and, you know, we don't have any extra money to keep our fleet from being eight years old to being five years old. That's something that we're working on, but as of right now, we haven't uh, been able to complete that process. But that is a reduction in capital items is what it is, money moving to capital project funds. Specific dollars, uh, Mike mentioned the library. In 2009, their budget was $2,150,000, and then the present budget, four years later, it's $1,450,000 or $700,000 reduction in that line item. Um, and again, this, this reflects, as I said, history that you've lived with and some of you live with and uh, just tells us where we've been, how far we've come down, the cuts that have had to be made, some of the departments that have had to... Uh, they have seen the reductions as a result of the revenues as specified in the first page. Go to the next one. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this next one. It's going to be easier for you to see and read there. What I wanted to show here was, again, using the same categories of departments, legislative, executive, judicial, and so on. Uh, if you take salaries and benefits by each of those departments compared to everything else, what I call the operating cost, what you can see at the very bottom there is that in 2009, of the total expenditures, 69.96, call it 70 percent of the total expenditures were for salaries and benefits, and, and, and then operations was uh, 30 percent. It remains pretty consistent, as you can see, going to 2010, it's about 70-30 again. In 2011, it's 70.96, call it 71 versus 29, and this year it's right in the middle at 70 and a half. So, Consistently through all four budget per periods, salary and benefits is, is in the 70 percent with the 30 percent for operating cost. A couple of items to uh, point, though, if you take a look at public safety, it's consistent pretty much across the board from 09 to 12, but it's not at the 70 percent. It's at 82 percent in 09, being salaries and benefits. Uh, 84 percent goes up a little, goes 84 percent again in 11, and same thing in 012. So. Basically, we see that the um, Public Safety Department is, as we pretty much know, is made up primarily of salaries. So anything that has to be done there is, is going to greatly affect salaries and the, the benefits of those people. Um, Mike, uh, you want to pick up uh, the 59 percent or 39 percent in culture? Um, uh, yes. The, the, the reason that you're seeing the culture line item salaries being 39 percent and operational costs being 60.59. Uh, when we fund the library a million three or a million four fifty last year, out of that million four fifty, we write them 12 equal checks. They take that money. They pay their own payrolls. So a large portion of that is still payroll, but it's not our payroll, and that's why it kind of makes that one look. If you ask the question, why don't we have as much salaries? We only pay our recreation people salaries. We provide a budget for the, the library, which is about 90 percent of their budget that's, that they use for salaries, but we don't break out their salaries because we just pay them a lump sum. How much funding did they receive from the state of Georgia for this for the fiscal year that we're in currently? Do you know? I think it's about a half a million, and we did 1.4 million, and I think the, the Board of Education did 2,000 or One, maybe, might one. be zero this year, last year, but it was 2,000, I think, the year before. But that's, that's their three main um, revenue-producing organizations. 
And was that a was that a did this was the state's portion a fairly substantial cut from the year before? Have we seen consistently the state money to libraries also um, yes, being cut? It, it has been cut as well. Yes. Do you know percentage-wise what that would be across the two or three budget cycles? We I, had that. I'd, I'd be guessing. Meeting. We had it at a commission meeting. I, I recall about a month or two ago. I had taken those numbers and at the end of one of the meetings, and I'm really lost right now. To I'd hate to quote without that piece of paper. Okay. So, but well, it was a reduction can, in all counts. That's something we can find out later. Okay. Mr. Preston. I just I know you guys are going to provide this today, and this is just a review. But uh, going forward in the future, when we see salaries and benefits, is there where we can get a percentage breakdown for how much is salary and wages? We've and got that. Is, it, we do have this, that. It's in this spreadsheet. I can okay. open it up and show it. Okay. Okay. Or provide Very good. It to you. I'll be patient. In, in an, <laughs> well, in an effort to try to get as much data out there, and you've got two sheets because of it, but we probably got as many as I don't know. Ten columns in between there, and then rather than show all of them, we just try to group them into two columns for you. We can get to that. We'll okay. give you that later, though. Okay. That does tell how much benefits are as a percent of salaries okay. in each case. And again, it's broken down in between there by the departments that make that up. Now we'll go into the fun part, if there is one. And that is the 2012 revenues versus the 2013. I had asked, and we had a meeting, if you recall, where we talked about do, having four budgets done, just to refresh or to, to express what that purpose was. It's what I call the worst case and best case and something in between. Uh, if we know the worst case, what it might be, I felt as of this time, it was actually February then, we need to start thinking about worst case instead of waiting until April 20th and going, oops, we just found out we're in bigger trouble than we thought. If worst case never comes about, we'll all do a dance. And hopefully best case is what we're going to end up with, but at least I wanted the board and everybody to understand what we may be up against and what we can hope for. So what you see in front of you is the 2012 revenues of $112 million, which were on the previous schedules as our history. And then we have 2013 worst case at $100.6 million, which is, as you can see, almost a $12 million reduction. If you look up to the top, the top item is real property taxes. Again, this is what we would get off of the tax digest for all the properties. And you can see that is a $10,500,000 reduction, and it's 20% to the right. Um, I'll just cover quickly and let Mike cover the rest, and that is uh, Mike's been in discussions with the uh, tax assessor's office for the last month or two or three, trying to figure out what it looks like and what it looks like. We've had numbers, if you recall, as low as six, and we've had numbers in the last couple of weeks as high as 20. So we took the worst case being 20, praying, if you would, going to the right side there, that we're looking at only 10. And although 10 doesn't sound hopeful, based on what Mike will tell you, it may be our best hope right now. So, Mike, if you want to. Yeah. We, uh, every year, in, starting in February, <clears throat> the Board of Education, uh, the tax, tax commissioner, tax assessor, and, um, and the county kind of get together every two weeks to kind of go over the process that they're going through. The very first meeting we went to, which, you know, is usually going to be a real low number because they really haven't had a lot to do since they started in January, was about six, six and a half percent. And we, at that point in time, when we were getting ready to come before you guys with our budget, we estimated a 10 percent reduction in the digest, um, which is that $106, $107 million number. Um, and then the second meeting we went to, it went from 6 to 10.1, and they were 10 percent done with basically everything. And when you look at that, with understanding that commercial and industrial really hasn't had any kind of a, a drop-off really in the last couple of years, we were very concerned with that. Um, we had already seen nearly a 15 percent reduction in the residential areas, which we wouldn't think how would happen again as it's dropped over the, over the years. So we went ahead and said, well, we need to, we need to set a number out there, and we set it at 20. Um, I had a meeting, we had a meeting this week on Tuesday, and the number is 11.25% uh, right now. That's about 50% through with all calculations, which is a lot better. When we were at 10% and it was 10, now we're at 50% and it's just a little over 11. Um, and uh, talking with uh, uh, the, the chief appraiser, uh, yesterday, he said he didn't, 
he felt like it was going to continue to, to grow, maybe 15, 16 percent, but he didn't think we would hit the 20 percent. So that's why we've got this hopeful column in here, because we do hope that we can come in at this number versus that worst case scenario, which we had a couple of weeks ago. The, we have two more meetings, and each meeting the number is going to fluctuate, may go up, may go down. You know, they haven't, they haven't included all the new growth in the county, which there's not much, but that will make those numbers go down, but the growth won't offset the, the loss in digest. So I think one of the things that has made this a challenge, too, is there has not been a uh, chief appraiser since August. Is that correct? And so correct. we now have someone in place who um, most people are probably very familiar with, Charlie Reddick, who has quite a uh, wonderful reputation here in the county, who has stepped up and um, offered his services to assist the county during this tough time. And so I think we are all breathing a sigh of relief that we have someone down in that office that will uh, certainly be looking at these numbers to make sure they're as accurate for the citizens and the county as he possibly can. And he, and he told me at the next meeting, I mean, he, I think he started Monday and we had the meeting on Tuesday. He said by the next meeting, two weeks, that he'll have been able to get in there and get his hands dirty and get in there and, and he'd be able to, he felt like he'd be able to present us a, a better number or a better guess even that we'll still be a month out. Used to, we could go to, to Mr. Reddick and sit down with him, and he'd run calculations on his 10 key and said it's going to be a 8.6% increase in the digest, and it was 8.571. I mean, he's been, it's almost like he's got a crystal ball, but you know, we're very happy to have him, and I know it'll help some of the cases, caseloads that we've got with appeals. Brian. Okay. Yes. One quick question. Sure. When you said 51 percent has been run, is that equal? Have they? Is that, how's that allocated between residential and the commercial? Because, or is it about equal parts from the way the tax digest is? She told me that, uh, or uh, Jan Hawkins, the assistant downstairs, she told me that the residential was about 60 percent done, and the majority of the uh, the sales comparisons have been done. Now they're looking at land sales and things, but homes have been basically finished. But there's still a little bit left there. The, the part that was dragging behind a little bit is the industrial and commercial. It's about 40 percent. The good thing is that in our commercial and industrial makes up about 15 percent of our right. digest. So even if we take a, a larger hit there, mm -hmm. it, if we see a 10 percent reduction there, we won't see a 10 percent full right. reduction right. in digest. So that's if there is good news, that would be okay. Where it would be. Thank you. It helps. Yes, sir. Okay. So obviously, the biggest part of this is is exactly that is we're not trying to put 20 percent up here to say. It's going to happen no more than we think 10 will, but sit here in March, early March, mid-March, to sit here and say we got a month or so. I, I don't want to be coming before the board, the board and said, guess what, we goofed, we should have gone with 20 and said this is how bad it can be for the reasons given. And as we said, we're hopeful on the 10 percent and everything I've heard says at this case, I don't think we'll find anything less than 10 percent, but we can be hopeful and even create a column at 5 percent if that's the way it comes out. Uh, looking at the numbers and comparing the revenues between 12 and the, the worst case, as you can see, the biggest is 11 million seven reduction. Um, the, uh, there's an increase in sales and use tax. Uh, taxes, tax collections this year have uh, increased, approximately what 100,000 a month or something like that. Mike? Local option sales tax. Local option, yeah, local option. And um, so we're looking at a 1.6 percent increase there from 27 to 29. Uh, grants, unfortunately, we're seeing a reduction in, uh, excuse me, not grants, but charge for services. We're seeing about a million and a half offsetting reduction there. And a lot of that is for, as I understand, probation and uh, uh, county services that we're not collecting the fines. People are, are doing uh, community service, excuse me, probation. They're going community service versus paying some fines. So our budget is less this year than what uh, we we thought what we're thinking we're going to have for 2012. Uh, the other sources, Mike, if you want to cover that $600,000 reduction from 2.1 to 1.4 regarding the auditors you were speaking of. Yes, sir. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the ways that we generate revenue is some of the other funds we have, grants, things like that. Uh, our auditors have come in and then the people who write grants have actually made you start tracking grants and what's called a grant fund instead of the general fund. And one of the things we can do in some of these grants is reimburse salaries and things like that, um, or reimburse expenses that are charged to the general fund. But in now what we have to do is we just charge them to that grant fund, 
and do not have the revenue flowing in to offset the expenses in the general fund. So here you see a reduction in revenue. If you went to, say, the NSP fund, you would see a reduction in expenditures out to pay back the general fund. So it's they're not paying me because I'm going ahead and charging the time over there. So it's a, it's a, even though you see a reduction in revenues here, it's also offset in other funds by reduction in expenditures. So it's a break-even time. <coughs> I apologize. I need to, need to come back. I explained fines and forfeitures with the uh, probation and community service being done instead of fines. That's $586,000 reduction. The big reduction in charges for services of a million, almost a million five, 1.2 of that is as we spoke earlier about the ambulance charges going up from three million up to five million. Uh, our budget for this year is only include is only putting it at three point eight million, bringing it back down from last year. We've had some discussions in the past about this. Hopefully, we can get that to be at a higher figure. But as we recall, sixty percent of what's billed becomes an issue. Hoping for seventy, so uh, that's that's the biggest reason that we're seeing it go from fourteen down to twelve, thirteen. So that is the revenue side of things for uh, next year, again, on a best case and a hopeful. Um, then on the next one is the expenditure side. And this is where it gets ugly. Mm -hmm. You can see 2012 is 112 million. The next column is called lowest expected can get to. This takes a lot of cutting by a lot of departments to get to this 107. If you flip back to the previous schedule where we have not only worst case but hopeful, you'll not see a number high as this. So even with the number being worst case, the 20% in property taxes, or the hopeful being at 10%, the total revenues in that column totaling 106 will not even cover the 107. So this is where we've got some work yet to do. and. Um, as you can see, though, the departments themselves are all, during that, during that um, reduction, if you would, from the 112 to the 107 million, 964, $4.4 million, $4.5 million reduction, 4% overall. You can see, for the most part, everybody's in the 8 to 9% reduction, except for debt service, which obviously is a fixed number, and uh, I might cover that in just a second. And then uh, the other is public safety which is only a 3.3% reduction, and we'll cover that as well in just a second. Uh, I want to go over to the hopeful, and I want to explain that column. And again, hopeful at $116,920,000 is, if you look to the left where it says four-day furlough, four furloughs, the, budget, the, the hopeful includes eliminating the four present furlough days in the county. If we eliminate the four furlough days, we would increase last year's budget of $112 million if everything stayed the same by $1.1 million. Last year we had a $1.1 million reduction in our budget because of early retirement. And then we had the $2.2 million, as you recall, because of the uh, pension fund over the past five years having been overfunded and the ability to not have to fund that two point two this year. So when you take the $112 million as a starting point and saying we're going to do absolutely nothing, we'd have the same $112 million and saying we did nothing but stay status quo, we'd be at $112 million. Instead, what we said in the hopeful is to get rid of furlough days. As I said, then we cannot re recoup the other two items because they were a one-time last year pickup, and therefore we'd have to pick up $4,467,000 from last year or last year's savings and the furloughs. If you'll take a look at the $116 million versus the $112 million from this year, the difference is the 4.467 figure. Therefore, what we're saying is that is really why we're looking at a number greater than the 2012 budget by $4 million. Again, these are parts and pieces that are thrown in here to make an understanding of what and why and where. And again, to put it in proper perspective, again, if you look at the revenues, Worst case, 100. Hopeful, 107. 106, rather. Neither one of those are going to cover where we're at here. Um, let's see. If you would, Mike, one on the uh, public safety. Uh, let's leave that. Uh, we'll just go to. Um, 
Let's cover the unallocated. There, that's a, a weird category for me, and I'll let Mike cover unallocated. We've got that documented quickly down here to show you this tab up and down. Same tab. Page down. Go ahead, Michael. Let's okay. Go. Um, on the unallocated, if, as you can see in the 2012 number above, it totaled $482,000. And in the 2013 column, it totals $1.4 million. Well, what we did here is we tried to explain why there's such a difference in those two numbers. As you can see, in both instances, the retiree insurance is in there, the unemployment is in there, small equipment, education and training, and contingency are all in both categories. What you don't see is, again, we did that immediate retirement incentive last year. It saved $1.1 million off of our budget. So I don't have that to reduce my unallocated again this year. So that's $1.1 million, which is basically the whole thing. There's also, last year we had a natural gas reduction. Our therms were, I want to think, 60, 60, 60 cent a therm. And we've got that reduced down to 48 and a half cent a therm. And I believe that we are bringing you a, 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 an item on the next agenda at 34 point something centitherm. So that's a 20 something percent reduction, which we haven't, in, we haven't changed the budget because we haven't adopted that particular item. As soon as we do that, that will probably save the county another $75,000. So, and that's the difference. It's $1.4 million in 13 versus it would have been, you know, 1.5 million in 2012, except for the early the, in the retirement incentive, and we we don't have that for this year. And then carrying it over to 2013, it goes to a million six twenty. And if you look at the rest of that schedule, basically it takes and says that if we take education from back to where it was last year to 100,000, and we take the small equipment back to where it was last year at 400,000, and then um, hopeful addition. What are those? That was that was just adding some additions in there at a million six twenty. So basically, that is why the increase from one four five seven to a million six twenty. But the obvious big difference is, as Mike expressed, one point one million dollar credit that we don't have the opportunity to uh, take with us into the new year. Um, Go to the next one. As a result of the 106 million column that is called lowest expected can get to, as you can see, we still have 4.5 million dollars of reductions that need to be made by departments. The each of the departments went and did a, as I said, a four different budgets from lowest worst case to best case, uh, ranging from the hundred and Six million, up to the um, 107 million. Excuse me, up to 116 million. And in doing so, I'm going to show you here the items that have been recapped up of those budgets. That if each department is faced with the 107 million dollar budget, this is what each of the areas have said will have to be done to achieve those numbers. So even though it says um, lowest we can go. The lowest we can go includes what is going to be read in these present in these next uh, set of uh, schedules. So, starting with uh, legislative and executive, you can see there's the 15 departments that it includes: board of commissioners, county clerks, public relations, county manager. Again, rather than read them, you can see the all the way down. The unallocated cost has already been covered. Again, it went up whether we liked it or not because of the lack of last year's credit. But you can see that the combination of all these departments, not one particular department, but basically the items that everybody brought forth and said in order for us to achieve the lowest worst case budget, or not worst, but the, because worst case could be 100. But if we had to go to 107 million, the legislative executive departments as shown here would have to in total eliminate 18 people, reduce hours, some consulting and so on and so forth that's on these pages. Um, next. Judicial, uh, they, they basically have nothing but salaries they can reduce there. Uh, in each, as you can see, the, the uh, uh, was it 14 or something like that, courts that are over there. 
And uh, to make their numbers in the previous page, everything they're going to have to do is going to be reducing salaries, which obviously means a reduction. They, the, each commissioner received a letter from each of the judges that kind of explained what all was going on. That's why we just left it at reduced salaries, because we didn't get that information until yesterday from the courts. And if you read each of the letters from each of the judges, they explained, <laughs> some of you read them, have explained why basically it is difficult to impossible to reduce the number of person the, the personnel within each of the courts. So each of you have that, and we will be working with that, and I'll be working with uh, the, all of the uh, uh, judicial uh, courts themselves as we move forward in the next couple of weeks. And again, when I say next couple of weeks, we're at, again, a starting point. Everything I'm showing here is just to say this is where we're at if money doesn't fall out of the skies or something doesn't happen here. And uh, we're not talking in 500,000s. We're not talking in a single million. We're talking in millions, as you've seen. So maybe there's some a lot of scrubbing that can be done. The question is what I call low-hanging fruit. We pretty much got the low-hanging fruit. Is there more to be possibly had? I would say probably there is, and we'll scrub and look for that, working with the various departments. But again, when I'm faced with 10 or $15 million, sitting here talking about the, the low the, the low hanging fruit that isn't there is a difficult thing but we're going to have to get into it based on the numbers i'm presenting and i want to make sure everybody understands who may be joining us late late on channel 14 this is worst case scenario we're not sitting here saying we're going to do these things this and is I, I want to reinforce every time i can this is a process this is not the, the budget we don't adopt the budget until may this is march I don't think you hired me and asked me to take this position to sit up here in May and go, guess what I just found out? And so what I'm trying to tell you today is this is what I have based on best guess that we're getting from everybody as far as the revenues coming in and best case or worst case of what the consequences will be if we don't have more money than that and where those cuts are going to happen. And as I said, 70 to 30 percent, 70 30 ratio of salaries means if you're going to cut for the most part, we're going to have to cut our salaries, uh, supplies and building expenses and, and debt and everything else, like we said, being fixed. Um, you know, I've talked to some departments, and they've already said they're, they're taking pins wherever they can from hotels and seminars and whatever. So I, I don't even kiddingly say anymore, uh, try to reduce your pins and papers and whatever for the reasons and the notepads and whatever. So they're working there. And Commissioner she, Preston had a question. Yes. Real quick, um, just so we can ask, per, I know you all don't have it tonight, but for perspective in the future as we make some of these harder decisions, can we have a list of total number of officers so we can figure out how big that 68 is when we start talking about that? And then also, have we done any benchmark analysis to see other communities that are our size, what's the typical number of police force, the typical number of fire um, personnel that communities that are our same size have working so we can kind of get some perspective of if we're in line out of line or, or you know because that's this, that scares the heck out of me when I see public safety at that so I kind of need to to have some type of relative perspective to know how big or how small that is I think I think there's there's a lot of variables as you know when you look at public safety uh, you can look at population you need to look at square miles you need to look at sure. a lot of things in the chief uh, obviously would be very beneficial to provide all that. I've heard statistics in the last year. Uh, each of you have heard them over the years more than I have as to the comparisons that are made, how many we should have per, per citizen and metrics like that. So I know they're available at this meeting. Again, I probably got more data than you want, but I want to get through this. And, and as far as uh, body counts and whatever, I did have something that was going to give you as far as body count by year. Uh, and next year's projected, and I didn't because in, in the absence of time, just moving forward, but that stuff is available. Okay. The staff has done an excellent job, as you can see, putting it together, and they've got all the, the stuff that we can put at our fingertips for you. Okay. Great. And this is worst case scenario. Correct. This is worst case. Again, keep in mind, worst case, though, is the $107 million in, in expenditures versus worst case revenues, 100, which means we've still got $7 million to get to a find, if you would, to even get to the 107 worst case expenditure. Because if, if you think the screaming was loud with having to do four budgets and starting at 107 million, I was not about ready to have it be heard in, in, in Canada if they had to go to 100 million. And it just wasn't worth an exercise of how much lower can we go when you can see the, the, the uh, uh, 
uh, the problems we've got just trying to get to 107 million with, the, with these charts that we're now going through. So the public safety, as you can see, includes police, fire, sheriff, um, MA, so on, um, all the other departments listed, animal control and code enforcement. You can see here, uh, eliminate Fairview Precinct, eliminate 68 patrol officers, 10 administrative position, analyst, uh, 45 um, uh, firefighters and paramedics, and that, what that would entail to, to eliminate 45 firefighters and paramedics would be the closing of three stations completely, which is engine and rescue at Salem. Uh, Flat Rock and Old Jackson only have engines, they don't have rescue. And then station three and 14 would close the rescue part and still have the engine part. None of these are acceptable as uh, not trying to make it scare. It's just this is what they said. If I don't have the money that I have this year, I only have one place to go. The fire department, if you recall, public safety was 84% versus the 70% for everybody, 70-30. There's public safety's 84-16. The fire department is 90-10. They bring that figure up. So when the fire department has to cut bodies, their bodies, when they have to cut money, it's going to be 90% of it has to come from bodies. And, then, and when you don't have the bodies, you can see the consequences, as the chief has said, the number of bodies and what that's going to do as far as scheduling, uh, staffing, and so on to keep the fire uh, stations open. And as you know better than I, uh, each station has to be staffed with a certain number of bodies and certain numbers of shifts. So it's not like you can say cut back here, cut back here, and just leave the stations open because they are required to have a certain number of firefighters, uh, et, et cetera, at each of the uh, operations. Uh, going to the next one. I'm going to take that mic now. Uh, public Works. Um, again, this is, uh, this is a DOT uh, fleet. Um, sign shops, just mostly the DOT has got uh, uh, recycling, uh, landfill type, it's, it's, that's the, the group we're talking about. And, uh, they've come up with uh, 16 positions, uh, doing some transfers to the stormwater fund, um, you know, eliminating, reducing contract services and materials and supplies, uh, implementing four 10-hour uh, ten days to save for on fuel costs, that's one of the measures that they tried to, to work with, and then also uh, <laughs> cutting over to cutting off the lights at exit 218 and 221 that that we pay for on a monthly basis. That's what Public Works came up with. In a sense, a lot of it is nickel and dimes, but the nickel and dimes again, as they saw where they could cut their budget to get the numbers, and of course, not nickels and dimes when you're eliminating 16 positions. Um, health and welfare. Again, reducing services, positions, contracts, and parking two buses, and that would be in the transit uh, system itself. Uh, next, we can come back to these uh, culture. Again, that's recreation and parks. Um, you can see that uh, they're looking at, at to do what uh, to possibly do is to in reduce, excuse me, increase impact fees, ten dollars a person. Uh, Fairview. Activity center rented out, I reduced the workforce, uh, closing, uh, as you can see, various rec center hours. And then the library has said that if, if they were cut by, I think the figure that we gave them is $147,000 reduction. In the worst case, they're saying if they got a reduction of $147,000, they close one library and eliminate four full time and four full time part time employees. Fairview seems to be coming up a lot in terms of um, cuts. I mean, has any other um, area been evaluated? Uh, this, this particular one is a, is a revenue, not a cut. Okay. And that's something that we just, it, I think what happened is the center was just barely getting open, maybe last year budget, and so now this year we thought we can rent out. We rent out rooms at the recreation facility at Heritage, and we talked about maybe doing some of this to help bring up some revenues. But we, we talked earlier about um, cutting the personnel out of the rec center and, um, um, you know, uh, targeting some private uh, people to come in and actually um, uh, use the center and try to create revenue for themselves. Right. right. There's, we're looking at every possibility, not only in at the Fairview Rec Center, but the Mosley Rec Center and the, and the Heritage and Locust Grove, all of them trying to see what 
And that's recreation providing us that information. They're the ones talking about this. So you know, hopefully they know what they're talking about. And I know about. it mentioned the public safety uh, close Fairview Precinct, uh, uh, Commissioner Holmes, but it also says 68 patrol officers and, again, fire stations that are mentioned. So, yes, everybody is being affected, not just Fairview. It's not just a – I don't believe anybody in presenting their budget was a pick on Fairview. Uh, again, everybody's looking at where, where they can find the money. None of them are happy to present any of this stuff. It took a lot just to have them put it forward, um, hoping and praying that all of this is for naught. But again, what I wanted to do is at least put in front of us today what would happen if, in fact, based on these numbers being this far off, that we'd have to do. Housing development, the last schedule. Mike, I'll let you tell me. Okay. Again, this, this is uh, one we talked about earlier. We went from 40-something people to nine people in the building department. and. Planning and zoning being very small too. Well, this is an additional three positions, where there's probably, you know, 15 total in this whole entire group or so. It's a very small group, but reduced hours. But they've act, they've actually put in potential of furloughing themselves instead of doing a county furlough. They made an op. They they've said we think this is something we can do to help offset the budget. Those would be voluntary furlough days. Um, again, cut programs, uh, eliminate call systems for inspections. As, as you can see, uh, ZAB meeting every other month instead of every month. Again, in this particular group, it's already so small. There's not a whole lot that you can do. And, and I think the total cuts, if you look at this, it, they're not, it's not a high dollar because they're already so small. We've just, with the economy and housing being so, just being so slow, there's no uh, people looking to come into the county. There's not, I, I shouldn't say that. The people looking to come into the county have slowed from what it was in the past, and that and you've seen that reflection by these departments being taken down year by year by year. So that's what makes up this one. And I believe building went from two and a half from 09 to I think last year was a six or seven hundred thousand dollars. So when you start talking about sixty thousand dollars, if it's ten percent, you know you're not. You can be talking one body. You get little pieces here, which is again what they they've addressed and trying to do it with three furloughs and some of the others to get to that. If it's sixty thousand under ten percent, um, we can come back and revisit. So we can move on. The next schedule is something I was talking to Mike uh, one night. I had a thought, and I came in the next morning. Asked Mike. I said, "There's any way you can get um, from the uh, tax assessor's office something that will tell us where homes are?" Um, just if you'll hold up just a second, uh, Andy. Thanks. And let me go through the schedule first. Okay. Thanks. Um, and what I asked them for is, is can we get just on family, uh, single family homes, how many we had and what the, what the taxes and things that are on here. In 2008, uh, the number of parcels, single family homes and subdivisions only, this does not homes in rural and wherever else, this is just single family homes and subdivision, there were 53,159 homes on the tax digest. You can see that their average value was $180,900. We've heard statistics of it declining. And uh, the fair value, if you take the fair value of those homes in the digest of $9.6 billion and divide it by 53, you should come up to the 180, almost $181,000 average per home. Then the 40%, we didn't get, and there's a note here that says we didn't consider exemptions. We just made it simple just to get a number and we'll compare. And at the millage rate at that time, 10.969 would generated 42.2 would have generated 4.42.2 million. That does not consider homesteads, so the number can be uh, lower than that because the exemptions aren't considered. But again, just to get a reference, which I'll do in a minute, the average taxes paid per home for the county portion is $793.87. Again, taking the 42 million dollars and divided by the 53,000 homes says the average taxpayer paid $793. $793. I would like, if I could, challenge you just for a second. Maybe you should take a pen and pen, paper, paper, not that I have the right to tell my bosses what to do, but just if you would, humor me. You'll notice under the 990, 999 Herman Cain plan, I guess, the 99999 houses, there's 3,060 houses in 2008. You'll notice that over 500 is 741. If you'll just take and write down two numbers, one is what do you think it was in the present tax digest, not the one coming up, but the one we just are working in this year, 
And what do you think the number of homes in the 2011, 12, under 999, and how many do you think are over $500,000? If you just write those numbers down, we'll have a little fun here maybe. And if anybody would like to share them before we hand out the real numbers, I'd, I'd, I'd be very interested to see who wants to do that. And if nobody wants to, then we'll just move on to the next part. Angie, if you'd hand out the sheets, I'd appreciate it. Anybody in here have over 10,000 for a sink under, under, under 999, 99,000? Anybody have over 10,000? One? You're right at? I was 95. 95. Well, guess what, folks? You aren't even close. I had 20,000 is what I wrote. She was guessing. Good guess. <laughs> 19,561 houses are now in that category. How many people had 300 or more for over 500? Did anybody have under 300? One, two? As you can see, folks, there are over $500,000 houses in 2008 are now down to 160. The other, the, uh, as you can see, what's interesting about this is we did increase in the number of parcels between 08 to 011 by 934, home, 934 homes. Every category is reduced except one, under 99, 999, or under $100,000. I draw your attention to the little set of numbers to the lower left. As you can see, in the over $400,000 valuation, which would be in the 2008 column, the 640, the 365, and the 741, totals 1,746. In 2011, if you add the same figures, same numbers for 2011, you come up to 402. That means that of the 741 houses alone, we can't go up three stratas and find all those houses. You have to go all the way to under $300,000 to go ahead and get the over $400,000, and even then we're a couple hundred houses short. Although this is going, this tells the story, and I'll give you the next schedule in a second. This tells the story of what has been the issue with property taxes, because of homes going down over these years, and where you can see the stratification of the pricing is. I'm not here to speak for the Board of Education, but every time I look at Brian and getting ready to, to present this schedule, he, he more than anybody else can appreciate the pain that this is going to cause or has caused in, in, in the uh, school systems. But I'm not here to talk about schools. Um, so what you have then, that is the numbers, and as you can see where they moved, if you go to the next schedule, this is the same information that was on the first schedule for 08. And as you can see, the end result of the houses being of lesser average value provides us with the 10, 000, almost $10,000 reduction in taxes, even at the 11.75 increase that is in 08 was 10.969, and today it is at 11.75 from the increase of 0.78 or something a couple years ago. Bottom line is, even with that millage increase, we're still collecting, four years later, um, $32.5 million. Um, the other interesting thing, couple interesting things, is the home, average home value has gone from $180,000 to $127,952, or a $52,000 decrease, 29% reduction in home values. And then, of course, the, the fair market value is down on the digest $6.9 billion in that period of time. That's with the B, 6.9. Fred, let me stop you right there. We've got a question. On all these values, are you reflecting homestead on all these? No, there's no homestead. There's no homestead on this? This is just strictly taking the tax assessor's valuation that before you start with the 40% and the homestead exemptions just to show the drop in the digest. So these numbers are not absolute, but they are consistent with each side only taking the 40% of the of the uh, of, uh, the uh, fair market value, excuse me. But I think, with or without it, it's going to come out with the same impact to say the values, you know, the, the ranges of the houses aren't going to change. 
the homestead exemption is what it is. If the homestead exemption was $80,000, we'd be in big trouble because the homestead exemption, if it was $80,000, we'd have this year 19,561 houses not paying any property taxes because that's about the average, as you can see in the first category, of the average home value of $70,810 for those 19,000 houses. The other thing to point out here is that the average county taxes on these homes has gone from $793 to $601 or a reduction of $192 uh, to, to each of these homeowners on average. And therefore, if you take a look at the under 999, 99,000 under 100,000, their taxes to the county for that on, on average again was $332 or almost half of the average um, whereas last year it was more than, it was less than half. Uh, now it's more than more than half, again because of the swing in the stratification of the of the houses. This again does not cover commercial industrial. This is just to get this data that that has been causing and plaguing homeowners in this county, seeing their values go down. The taxes uh, tax digest has reflected it, and as a result of reflecting it. You can see the re reduction in the tax dollars that are collected and averages that are put here. And uh, what's interesting is if you take a look at the average home value in 08, on average for the numbers of houses, they're pretty much the same. In 08, there were 126, in 2011, 122, and you 171, 170. So they pretty much stayed the same except the under 100,000, the average went from 83 down to 70. So, and that's, of course, where all the houses are. So this is, as no surprise, it is, it's, I think it's a surprise based on the numbers you wrote down. That's why I asked if you'd humor me. And basically, as you can see, I don't think anybody thought that this stratification was as bad as it really is, is showing out. <laughs> Next. As everybody knows, and again, this is done without exemptions. On a $127,000 house at 40% without, again, homestead exemption, those figures here are presented would be lower because of exemptions. But the starting point just to use, if you recall in the previous sheet, was $601.30 or something. I rounded the 127,952 to 127,900. Again, at our millage of 1175 at 40%. The county tax is $601. The remaining taxes, as best we can compute them just to get them on here at the millages versus not again considering exemptions. Um, you can see the state's a mere 12 bucks, the schools $1,200, the hospitals 51, water, storm water, um, two different areas but both have water in them. That totals $1,400 or so of the tax bill that again without exemptions being $2,016, 70% of it is for non-county taxes. So when people see their tax bills going up or down, the majority of it is happening in the second category, as we all know. And again, only 30% of the taxes collected go to the county to take care of the items that are in this general budget we've been talking about. So we're working with much smaller numbers than what the total tax bill, if you would, to the uh, citizens in, in Henry County are. Question. No. Mr. Samey made the observation that that 60113 is the equivalent of about $50 a month and certainly far less than most of us pay for our cable television each month. And we have a huge plethora of services um, provided to us for that, for that fee. It's, re it's really um, remarkable. Let me, let me uh, along those lines, let me, I mentioned this does not include um, it, it can include commercial and, resi uh, commercial and industrial and everything else, and here's how you would do it. If you said that we had a $1,279,000 commercial piece of property, 10 times the average house of 127,000, I'm just taking and saying if it was a commercial piece of property was worth a million two, 10 times more than the $127,000 piece of property, all you would do is take the $600 times 10 and say that commercial piece of property is paying $6,000 a year as opposed to $600 that an average home in Henry County is paying. Likewise, 
if you take a warehouse and if it's worth $12 million, take that number of 600 times 100 and they would be paying 60000 to the county and likewise they would be paying $141,000 to the school system. And as we know, the warehouses don't have children in them and thus they're providing funds to the school systems as well as to the county with less services being required as we know residents do. So at the end of the day, this can be used. This is basically saying for every $127,900 in digest value per parcel, this is what the taxes would be. And again, take whatever that is, times 10 or 100, whatever you want it to be for the other values, that's what would come out, just to put commercial and industrial or any of the other types of properties out there in, in perspective. What I've done on the next schedule is, it's, it's, uh, if you'll bear with me, and this is a new way to look at things, but if you'll bear with me as far as what I'm trying to put up here is this. If we take the worst case, best case scenario in 2013 of 107964 which we called hopeful, I think, in the previous schedule, um, if you do that, we then took in something I don't think has been done before, and maybe it has, uh, and that is first time I've seen it. And we went ahead and took the revenue, associated revenues for those departments so that if transit's getting grants and any other kind of money, senior services is getting money, uh, the uh, uh, jail tax, tax assessor or any tax uh, commissioner, rather, and others, we gave credit to them to come up with the net departmental cost. You may ask, why do we do that? In some cases, such as senior services or transit, if somebody were to say, we're just going to stop senior services and transit, and I said, if, I'm not saying we are, I'm just trying to make a point here if I could. You can't just look at the expenses, and I think some commissioners have made this point over the years. You can't just say we're spending $2 million or $4 million without understanding when it goes away, the grant money that's in the revenue side goes away as well. So what we've tried to do is here is to say this is the net figure that these areas, these departments are working with. So what you can see here is I've taken and said, um, if you would, the percent of the total cost, the legislative and executive is 12.64 of the total cost, net cost of $89 million. Public safety is 55% of it. Public works and so on and so on and so on, you can see is, is again, lesser amounts, and there you have where the figures lie. Then went ahead and said, if everybody paid in proportion to the percentage of the services rendered, their $601 in accordance with those percentages. Of the $601 that we said for an average $127 house, if you multiply the 12.64% times the 601, each household is paying $75 of their $601 for legislative and executive. Likewise, if you said public safety, of the $601, they're paying 55% of it. If it's going to fund public safety, $331 is what of their 600 and some dollars. Let me point out, as I mentioned earlier, houses below $100,000 are not paying $600 in taxes a year. They pay in $300. So if it's half of what this average is, somebody with a $100,000 house paying 332 and taking these numbers, they're contributing half of these amounts towards these services, to put it in perspective. Question that can be raised, and what we will do here, if you want, is just to show, take, we'll take the legislative and executive. As I mentioned, there's 15 departments, and we'll open this up. And I hope, don't know if you, we can see it there. And I guess i got to find my schedule. Here it is. And if we open up the 15 departments that make up the $14,538,000 or whatever, $14,500, $14,500,000, um, you can see by department where the money is. As we mentioned, unallocated the earlier is 1.4 of it, or to the right you will see it represents $9.79 of the $76. Uh, moving up above that, public buildings, is two million dollars of the of the uh, uh, figure, and that is um, thirteen dollars and forty eight cents of the seventy six dollars. Go up to IT, internet, uh, the technology services, two point five. 
$16.90. So those are the three big items. You also have um, risk management, which is our insurance that we're required. It's booked into there for all of our insurance policies. It's not, it, it is not personnel, but a couple, what, one person? One person and the rest is the insurance cost. And interesting, if you'll take a look, uh, tax assessor. And I can't see the figure yet. There's tax assessor. I've got different numbers. Of tax assessor Wait, is. Where am I? Tax assessor is two dollars and thirty-nine cents. I don't have the blown-up version. I have an old one here. It's two dollars and thirty-nine cents for tax assessor. And again, what I, what I want to point out here is uh, that amount of money is a lot of money. But at the same time, when you come down to it. Um, what we're looking at is 15 departments allocated to, and you can see some of them are 500,000. The commissioners is 500,000. And shame, shame on you, you didn't generate any revenue to offset it, so. I'm trying, guys, I'm trying. Anyways, and uh, goes on down the line, but you can see a lot of it is in the less than $500,000 category. The bigger ones, as I mentioned, technology services. The reason I point these out is when we talk, most people talk, and the reason for this meeting I was hoping to have televised and, and present all this data is that most people might think the county budget, we know all know it's public safety. We all know it is 50, 60, or 70 percent of it. At the end of the day, even though there's 14 million or whatever here, the question becomes one of where is the rest of it going in each of the services from finance to technology, human resources, and so on are departments that every business has to have to run it. And uh, these uh, are the expenditures, if you would, that it takes at the present, at the worst case level, which still, again, requires cuts to the present where we're at today. Um, we can expand any of these, uh, if you'd like, and, and show where revenues, uh, you see the totals of each one judicial where we started with 12 million, seven and had four million in revenues, leaving it with 85, 8.5 million. Uh, public safety, the 56 million, reducing it by seven uh, for collections and grants and everything else for 49 and the 331 accordingly per, uh, <clears throat> per citizen, per $127,000 of tax, di tax digest. Um, basically what, what this shows, if we opened them all up, is the number of departments, uh, judicial itself, the number of departments, public safety. Again, we all know um, it's police, fire, uh, EMS, and sheriff. And if you take just those alone, they represent 96% of that um, public safety budget. You'll see code enforcement and animal control are in there and a couple other ones, EMA and some others, but they only represent less than 4% of that total budget but they are something to be considered that's part of what the county is, has in departments to run it and they can't be overlooked because there's services that are provided that are necessary uh, to uh, operate. And public works, I, again, I will point out this budget does not have any money in it for resurfacing. We talked last year that the uh, continued cut last to this year's budget we're presently in was $5 million, the same as it was the previous year with no money for resurfacing. We had to rely on SPLOST. Uh, at this point, there's no money in this budget because it's consistent with the present budget we're in. So there still is no money being allocated. Or as you know, we'd be at 121 million versus 115 million or 16 million that I previously showed you. So basically all the departments that, that go into each one of these, some of them as we talk culture and recreation is just recreation and libraries. But again, you can see that between those two departments, oh, let me back up. Um, let's go to uh, let's go to uh, health and welfare. Sorry. I hope my number is right. Four six. Where am I? Yeah, four six five. Um, health and welfare. As you can see, there are two, four, five uh, budgets there. Uh, the biggest of which is transit services and the other senior ser citizen services. But take a note that the transit of a million three, again in the worst case, is a million three with grants to be received to 448, leaving 858,000. And as you can see, that's $5.76 of the $601 that each citizen is contributing 
of their $600, if that's what they're paying, $5.76 of it is what they're contributing for the net cost to do transit services. Senior services starts at almost two and a half million, has grants and other money, whatever monies it gets, is generating 1.124 million. I think some of that's meal and wheels, things like that. Their net budget is a million three sixty seven. And again, that's nine dollars and seventeen cents each taxpayer pays of their six hundred dollars to have Henry County have the quality of life for senior services and uh, transit, and this, those two categories. And as you can see, between the two, that's roughly all of it. The only other is health and welfare. Again, Mike, if you want to cover that one, I'll shut up. <laughs> Under which one? Health and welfare, the uh, 500000 what that is. Oh, okay. Um, this is, uh, and I'm going to have to look at Angie to make sure I'm right. This is the, the health department and DFACS. Uh, Henry County Council Center. Uh, development disabilities basically the buildings on the right hand side as you leave out of this building down there that's where um, we are we are we fund a, a portion of those of those salaries of those uh, I'm sorry not salaries of those departments um, you know family children services defects connecting Henry um, one of the things on the connecting Henry it does show hundred forty three thousand dollar expense Associated revenues of 84,000. The other 59,054 is paid for by other funds. It is a zero cost department to the general fund, but that's basically a revenue coming in to cover the other $59,000. So it just it does show an expense or a, a a cost, but that cost is covered by revenue. So that this fund or this particular department does not cost the general fund or taxpayers a penny. And it represents, even if it was 59000 and I'm not saying it does because Mike just clarified, it represents $0.40 cents of the $600 tax bill uh, if, in fact, it was the 59000 that was in it, which it is not. So, uh, again, we can open these up, give you the rest of them, and show you where. But my point in this is that each of these single line items called housing development, health and welfare, public safety, and so on, even legislative and executive, are numerous, numerous departments that it takes to run the county just beyond having the public safety. I'm not making any judgments of who's more important, uh, everybody's important, but I'm just trying to make sure everybody understands from an eye-opening standpoint, the county budget is made up of, of, of a whole bunch of other pieces that people don't think about. You know, public buildings is $2 million. Um, Mike? Uh, uh, public buildings, that would be um, our, our maintenance uh, crew. Um, Mike Keeblin and his people, and they maintain every building in the county. And there's, you know, large cost for air conditioning repairs and just maintenance of it is just a huge cost. That's also the jail, fire stations, and all those maintenance as well. So that's just a different way to look at where the tax dollars are going, trying to allocate them in some form or fashion. Somebody could do it. Seven other ways to what I've done. I'm just trying to set up some type of a, a review that says this is where somebody paying taxes on $127,000 or per $127,000, $600 per, and these are the services that are generated by an overall broad basis and, of course, layering it into the various departments such as legislative and executive being commissioners, you know, county clerk, uh, public relations, county manager, county attorney, tax uh, Commissioner of Finance, Technology, Human Resource, Risk Management, Procurement, Tax Assessor, Election, Public Buildings, and Unallocated. So, again, pretty pretty heavy uh, needs in that area. Um, just a couple more and I'm done. Next schedule. This just shows on the bar graph the gross digest at 100%. Uh, sometimes we hear the number six billion, seven billion, eight billion. Every that is all a function of the forty percent. These are the gross numbers, and in this particular case, you can see in 1996 the gross digest was 4.9 billion. It peaked in 2008 at 20.299 billion. Since 2008, you can see it dropped a tiny bit in 2009, dropped to 17 billion, 16 billion. And again, looking at uh, this year, if uh, we end up with an 18% uh, reduction, it would be 13.5 billion. 
And again, using then the 40 percent of that figure will get you more of the numbers you typically hear of the billions that are, are really uh, on the digest at uh, the assessed value. <coughs> the last, last graph, uh, last uh, schedule. You can applause. <laughs> that was the last one, isn't it? Yeah. Last one is that if, in fact, we end up with a 15 percent, I've used 10, I've used 20, I just showed 18. If we end up with a 15 percent reduction to the average home, and again, average, it would take the present $127,900 house with a 15 percent reduction in value to $108,715. That's just a pure calculation. There's no magic to it. What this shows is that 11.75, the total collections, which was on a previous schedule, was $2,016. If the millage were to be raised by 2.05 to 13.8, the county would end up collecting the same $600, $1 less, with the reduction of the 15%. Still end up collecting $600. State taxes and school and hospital and everything else will be reduced. Uh, the net of which would be, uh, as you can see, the schools, the one that's uh, going to be losing for the most part as a result of it. Even with we get the higher millage, they can't because they're at the maximum 20. At the end of the day, the taxpayer's bill would go from 2016 to 1808. Again, I, I, I will remember, disclaim, have a disclaimer that this is, again, without homestead or any other exemptions in it. It's just a broad number calculation at the 40 percent of the valuation. So as you can see overall if, if the millage were to go up, if in fact we ended up with a 15 percent reduction in assessed value uh, to the 108 and a millage increase of 13.8, the taxpayer from a county tax standpoint would remain the same and the end result is the schools and the others still without the ability to raise their millage would be having a reduction to the overall tax. I throw that in just as a comparison. I'm not suggesting anything to anybody. I'm just putting it out there to show, again, if we're forced to see another continued reduction in home values or property of uh, a tax digest, the end result is what we saw in all the previous schedules will continue to show the decline in revenues, which is what we're looking at to try and find to uh, run the county. Questions? Mr. Preston. Um, I wanted to, could y'all have that breakout of how much is benefits? Because let's, let's face it, the um, everything y'all brought, if you boiled it down, people is where our money goes. And so it, it's kind of hard to nibble around the edges when we spend most of our money on the people. So if we had to break out benefits versus salaries and wages, what is that percentage? Uh, is it, is it 65, 35, 70, 30? I thought I knew it at one time, but I don't want to guess. Um, okay. It, it's on the schedule here if, if uh, Angie can pull it. Angie, what's the? I'm, I'm going to email it to Mike and he can pull it up. Okay. Is it in, the, uh, in that schedule we have with the columns hidden or no? Not on the one that's emailed to him. Okay. I just know after looking at the um, everything that you presented today, I saw a lot of people's jobs out there. And um, I'd prefer before we start letting go people and doing things like that, we make sure that we've looked at make sure our benefits are, are tied into market and, and other things to see if there's something we can't do there um, to, to save a few jobs, but again, still save money. Again, nothing that has been presented here other than the cold hard facts that are facts are what I'm presenting. There's no suggestion or any window of what and why and how. It's just to say these are the numbers as they presently are presented. All options are on the table. Your suggestions and others that we've had are on the table for items. The next level of what we'll be doing is taking a look at each of the departmental budgets by line item, personnel, line items, and everything else, tying back to their suggestions of what they would have to do and taking a look at other possible cost-saving ideas that have been suggested and may continue to be suggested to, to avoid all of the things that were on those pages. Nothing is, is, is being recommended. This is just, as I said, if the number was a million dollars, I wouldn't be sitting here as concerned. But when I start looking at 100 as worst case in revenues and 116 is what we need to stay status quo or get rid of furlough days really is the only difference, 
between this year and next year, uh, those are the numbers that, that, that we're starting with. For example, um, in, in fiscal year 2009, um, I need to, un where's the, there was 51%, 51.18% of the budget was salaries, 18.77 uh, were benefits, um, and then the rest of the, the 30.04 were operational costs. So, so how much did 18.77 and what was the salaries, 51? 51.18. That is for 2009. Okay. For 2010, salaries are 51.06, benefits 18.76, cost of uh, operational costs 30.18. That was 9, 10, 11, 12. What's our most recent? That 12. Yeah, I'm what's give you what's those seat. breakouts? 11 is 51.81. For salaries, 19.14 for benefits, 29.04 for other costs. It was no, the benefits was 19. Point what? One four. One four. Okay. And then the latest one that we've got, nine ten left till for 12 for budget wise, it's 51.32 for salaries, 19.24 for benefits, and 29.43. So it's, it stayed pretty steady throughout all four years. Um, and that's on the average. Now, you know, if we go back and look at the police department, you're going to see a lot more salaries and benefits than you will in other departments. And, for example, in the other other sources, other uses, it's none salaries, all um, operational cost. And I will provide you. I can email this to you or, or provide it to you in a hard copy okay. for you to keep looking at. That way you can drill down into each one and, and get some answers. <coughs> Mr. Bowman? A couple of things, Fred. Did we, uh, I know that, that, that the transit issue, we charge transit. Don't, when, when they pick somebody up, don't, don't we charge for some of that? Or There are some private rides, private, you know, most of it is through the state of Georgia, through GDOT and other um, ARRA grants that cover the majority of his costs. But yes, if somebody wanted to go from if I called them and said, can you take me from my house to Walmart and back, I would pay a fee before I got on the bus. Does, now, I thought that the numbers on the transit again were, what are we getting grants on transit? I thought that our, everything totaled in the $800,000 range and we had like a million two or so. so it's like They do a, they came before you just the other day right. and, and, and did a second uh, allotment. So it's hard for us to say we're going to fund you for the first six months and not fund you for the second when we know we're going to get revenues, but we don't know what they are. Right. So that's how that's why it's 400. It's probably I think talking to David, like 80 cent out of every dollar or 70 cent out of every dollar is covered by some kind of grant. One of the things that happens there is when we buy a bus, we buy a fifty thousand dollar bus. We pay ten thousand dollars and forty thousand of it is a grant. So in that case. He may have his salary may not eighty percent eighty cent out of every dollar of his salary is not recovered by a grant because we get this contribution for a bus. But overall, in the end, eighty percent of what they expend we get back through grants and revenues. There's also a timing difference between the years. I think in one year there was a grant that was missed in one year, came into the next year by the time it got here. That year may have been also got theirs on time. And thus, the next year is going to look less because the previous year got sort of two years of grants or a grant and a half, if you would, in one year. I know that we also get money from ARC and others for our seniors. Is, uh, are we looking into maybe raising the fees there so that we can generate more? I'll, more leave, that, break I'll leave that to the Board of Commissioners to discuss Sir? everything. <laughs> I think that was a discussion once about raising fees. <laughs> for a different reason. That yeah, was for out of county. This is this is to try and, you know, maybe make up for some of that. And uh, I know there's there's still that issue out there of uh, about $800,000 worth of supplemental pay that's still kind of looming that we haven't really looked at on this next election period that's coming up. So... Just wondering, I, I mean, I, because when you when we first went through that, first of all, I want to make sure everybody knows this is the first time that we, 
as a board received this. It's, I know that this is the first time I received it, so I'll have more questions after I have an opportunity to condense it in my mind. There, there's it's a lot, a lot of information to try and you know, I didn't want to overburden you with a lot of it, but I think with what we're in and the times we're in, it's going to take that kind of detail that we're going to be drilling down, but I wanted you to have a head start to understand some of the consequences of where we may end up, the consequences if we end up there as expressed by each of the departments, and to the extent some of the things you mentioned, you know, 20,000 here, 50,000 there, we're not going to leave those off the table. We're going to look at them with each department to salvage, you know, what we can uh, and not going after salaries and uh, personnel, but again, when 70 percent of your budget, in some cases 90 percent in the fire department are personnel, if they are affected by any cuts, it's going to relate, obviously, to personnel. That's all I have, Madam Chair. Thank you. Anyone else with a question or comment? Mr. Holder. I have several comments and questions. Back to the first page, and we don't have to flip back to that, but on sales and use tax, is that the lost and splossed with the county's proportion of that as totals? There's no splossed in there. It's all lost. All of it is lost. Lost. And and the, that's, <laughs> that's with the 65% that we currently receive and the 35% that the city has received, correct? Yes. Okay. I mean, the so, items within that sales and use tax category, I'll just read, television cable, sales tax, the lost, alcohol beverage tax, which is very, very small, business and occupation taxes, insurance premiums, financial institution license, Property, penalties and interest, um, and FIFA, what's the FIFA, which is peanuts. So, I mean, those are the categories that make all that up. Make that up. Okay, so I wanted that clear, and I think the people may want to hear that too because of we have issues with SPLOS, we have issues with loss, uh, local option sales tax. So, okay, on the expenditures by services, culture and recreation. Is the Recreation Department currently responsible for the lawn maintenance and landscaping of all of the public buildings? Yes, sir. Okay. Is that shown as, as an expense? Is it broken out by department or by building or how is that done? I know we tried in this, in this proposal, each thing was broken out. so. You know, does the jail get charged a portion of, of the... We, okay. We do have the ability to do that. We just haven't broken it out. I mean, that's almost like you got a line out okay. with a breakout and then another breakout and another... Yeah. There's another thing that I just certainly want to bring to everyone's attention, and that is, if that rec department is responsible for every park in this county and every public building from Fairview to Locust Grove and from Hampton to Ola, tell us how many are on the, the maintenance crew that is responsible for mowing the, just nothing more than mowing the grass and, and, and trimming the hedge in all of these buildings. How many are left after we made the cutbacks last year? I, I I don't, I don't. 12, 14? I'd say, yeah, I was making 16, 18. Okay. It's, it's almost physically impossible to do that. Uh, I think anybody that knows that, that's almost physically impossible. We, we had a free ride last year because we didn't have any rain. The grass didn't grow. But ladies and gentlemen, if we don't address that this year, we're all going to get run out of here because these these parks and these public buildings are going to look terrible. That's just that's that's just an issue I had. Okay. As far as the furlough days, and I understand that the position of several on the board here said that no more furlough days. That's it. Wipe it out. Have we actually? surveyed our employees to see if they had rather, number one, continue with four furlough days, which is $1.1 million, or possibly 
lose 18 positions in uh, legislative and executive, reduce salaries, lose 68 patrol officers, 45. And we, I know that, you know, those furlough days can't protect all these jobs. That's certainly not what I'm saying. But have we surveyed the employees to see what they would prefer? I don't think we need a survey. It's, it's come quite loud and clear from the meetings I've heard that basically furloughs is an option rather than layoffs again. But, but the starting point that we had was the direction of the board to say we don't want furloughs. So what we did in this presentation, which is not the budget, which is not I'm looking saying. to be amended, it's I'm not saying, saying we're going to lay anybody off or shut fire stations down. It's the process of where we're going to end up. This is the starting point to say worst case, and I use that strong as I can, to best case where we might end up. And in doing that, if there is no $1.1 million that can be found any more than we can find the five or ten other million dollars we need, then the commissioners will have to figure out if, if they really want to find that million dollars. And, this, and the uh, employees, I think, will thoroughly understand there is no money for furloughs because we don't have the money to keep the people. So it's, it's a combination of all of it. Uh, the, the, I can't say the screams, but for the most part, the discussions I've heard are pretty much, why are we laying people off? The answer is we're not laying people off. We're putting a budget together that says if this is the amount of dollars we have and this is all you're going to get, then it becomes an issue of where's the money going to go? And, you know, the other side of that is to, to some extent that uh, if you start talking about pecking order of where the money goes and who gets 100%, and that's another discussion that the commissioners are going to have, I'm sure, as to where does the money go and who doesn't get cut. Um, but again, what I'm trying to present here, what staff's trying to present, is the fact that this is, again, this is the bucket. It's this big. It shrinks to this, and the people going in and reaching in to get money is no different than at, how, at our homes trying to figure out where the bread money is and the rent money and everything else is. And again, that, how that pot shrinks or, or grows is key and part of it, uh, uh, Commissioner Holder, is, you know, can we afford what was the desires? And, you know, one subject that's not been put in here as well is the fact that we've talked about trying to do something with the compression for public safety. Sure. There's nothing in here to take care of it again. So. I understand. And as far as a bare bones budget, it could very well have been my idea to come back with this and because we need to know what we've got the we have this much money that's what we got to do to meet that budget didn't have the options i agree one more time worst case scenario how many million dollars will we be short in revenue from this year from last year to what we're proposing this year i think based on yesterday's report that mike out or today's report the 20 percent, which is listed originally as a tw as worst case, which we had heard a couple weeks being 15 to 20, so we picked the 20. Now being 14 to 16 or 15, that worst case then probably goes up by two and a half million. I think the worst case, I think it's 100 million dollars that was shown as worst case on uh, the number six. Page, yeah, I don't know the number, but is uh, 100 million. That 100 would obviously go up by about two and a half million for the two. Okay, but based on last year, based on last year to this year, worst case scenario, how many million dollars difference is it? Well, we're at 112, but realistically we're at 112 budget, but we're really at 100 and I'll call it 14, 15. We're at 115. I have 116, but I'm taking the million out for furloughs. So if I take the million out of that 116, it's 115 for the stuff that we're not going to get credit for. So we're looking at 115 versus possibly 102 in the worst case scenario of receipts. Therefore, we're looking at about $13 million shortfall. Okay. And again, nothing in here expenditure wise has been budgeted at the $102 million. Everything here started at 107. Again, it made no sense to sit here and tell the fire department and police how many more people you're going to lay off if you lose another million dollars to get it to 102 when we're sitting here right now at 107 with the kind of destruction that it shows in the, in the numbers itself already. Okay. Is, is, as far as, uh, I know in legislative executive you said no funds to hold elections. I don't believe that's a, by law that you, they can't, I mean, we, let's come on. Sorry, it's almost a scare tactic. That money. can't happen. You've no. got to have the money to hold an election. 
we're, we're, again, we're taking from the budgets the starting point to say this is what we presented. We didn't challenge anybody. We said and that's what all we, we asked. Had, this is what we asked for. And exactly. That, and exactly basically what, what we're we starting for. with is just that. We don't, we're not challenging. We're saying here's your pot of bucks. You tell us what you're going to have to do if this is all you get. Okay. Because at the end of the day, this is the number we ought to come to. I know some numbers, and, and we'll go to public safety now. But you're talking about 68 patrol officers, 10 administrators, that's 78, 79 plus 45. You do the math and figure that with salary and benefits and tell me how many dollars that is just in this public safety. Say the average with benefits. Average. I'm talking average about average. average. I'm not say 45 with benefits. Well, rather than that, let's, rather, I know you don't have that information necessarily in front of you, but that's that's what we have to look at. Um, and again, and the, what are the cost savings of closing three fire stations and what have you? Um, let's go. Let's go. Look, go further. Public works. There's 16 positions. When we start adding this up with all of these positions. And all the benefits that go along with it, does that equal up to the $13 million is my question. Based on the way the budgets were presented, it does. That's okay. how they presented it. They presented it as saying these are the cuts that reduces the dollars accordingly, and that gets us to the number that they were working towards in the worst case or the other scenarios. I, I would certainly ask that you look at that closely. There's nothing sure at this point does. we've done to not look at. We've not looked at it yet. Again, all we could do in the last number of days is compile this to present what we've got as a starting point. There's been no drill down to the next set of numbers of where, what, why. There's been some good suggestions by various departments of things that they're going to do in cost savings, which are not related to, uh, do not relate here, but they are suggestions that they've made that will be considered in the next round of looking at what and how and where we get to where we need to be. All right, let's go to culture and recreation. <clears throat> You showed associated revenues of $180,338. And is that the total amount of revenue that comes from the libraries and the rec department as far as revenues are concerned? That's strictly 180 all comes from uh, recreation, parks and recs. There's none, of, right. so you're none associated so, with libraries. So, so you're telling me that with all of the tournaments that we boast about hosting here and all of the thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars of revenue that's generated either through fees or whatever, entrance fees, reg registration fees, that we only come up with $180,000. Something is not right with that number. We're not seeing something. Because if recreation has this much in expenses, they have some more than $180,000 in revenues. I don't know where it's lost, where it's being shifted. I don't know. If, if you'll remember... When we talked about culture and recreation, they dropped like two million dollars of money. We had to reduce, you know, we've reduced their budget over over time. And I said we don't put any expenses and any revenues in there for programs. This hundred and eighty thousand does include uh, whatever World Series things that go on. That's some of that money in there. But it's the other money. In the past, that number's been as high as almost a million dollars. But you know, normally it's probably around three hundred to four hundred thousand dollars. That revenue will come in, but we don't we don't budget the expense nor the revenue. There are part time people that would be hired to, to handle those projects, and they're not in the budget as far as part time people for something to say we're going to have a program or not have a program. When it comes in, we'll have revenue and expense, and we'll neutralize out. Let's simplify it then. How much money does recreation turn over to the general fund? Is it only $180,000? At this point, the budget figure that's in there is only $3 million. If we made it five, it could be, you know, a whole no, bigger, no, no, higher no, no, figure. No. no, I'm not talking about that, Fred. I'm talking about revenue only. You tell me how much, and I, if you, you don't have that now, probably, but I want to see it. I want yeah. to know because we are told that it is many times more than $180,000 that's generated through the through the parks and rec department, and I, I tend to agree that it is. I can't imagine this thing tomorrow night out here with, with 470 teams. Now tell me, you know, just the registration fees from that would have to be tremendous, and that money has to go somewhere. The rec doesn't hold it; they have to send it all to the 
general fund. So a lot all, of I ask, all I ask is that you get me some numbers that, that I feel more comfortable with and confident in than I you, do you, you will get them. <laughs> You'll give you a whole bunch more numbers. We're just That's all I ask. We're, we're glossing over lately as we can for the past two hours to get you the oh, and details. I know, look, this is new to us because this is the first time any of us have seen these numbers. And uh, Commissioner Holder, last year it was six hundred seventy thousand dollars. Well, why is it one hundred eighty here? Again, one hundred and eighty that are guaranteed revenues coming in. I don't know if anybody's going to take tap dancing classes or piano lessons. What was the department budget last year? The expenses last year were pretty close to this three point. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, that's. Uh, where, where does the so yeah, that's four million. where do, where do four the million. rental fees that, that recreation where their facilities are rented, where does it go? Is it reflected in the 180000 We rented, what, $30,000 worth of buildings last year? Was it something like that? I think it was like $30,000, like if you're renting the Locust Grove Rec Center or Senior Center, those type rentals. Um, it's it's not huge. It's There's a $30,000, and I'm, I'm going to defer to the county attorney on this one, the one that I'm very familiar with that is in Locust Grove that brings about 30000 a year just for one building. Is if, that not correct? If it is leased at the rates that it's, it's supposed leased to be leased building. at. Yes. That, that brings in 30000 and it's on that red car property. We'll, we'll have to go and pull those numbers and make and, – Again, this was based on what recreation gave us, the revenues they were going to bring in, and I gave them credit for that. Like I said, last year, actual uh, 2011, June 30, 2011, our fiscal year 2011, they actually had in those same line items $670,000 worth of revenue. But if I go and put $670,000 worth of revenue in this line item, I've also got to add those corresponding expenses, and most of the time the expenses outweigh the revenues. Most every time, because when you provide a service, it's usually not profit. You can't look at it as a profit. That's basically all I have. Mr. President. The only other thing I want to add, just to kind of put it in perspective, I pulled out my crystal ball based upon what Mr. Bush gave us on the real property declines and kind of ex expanded it out on how much was commercial, how much was residential. And, you know, probably with us being down 11 and a quarter percent, only 51 percent through, if you had to just – rub the crystal ball and figure something out, it's probably going to come somewhere between 12 and 13, about 12 and a half percent. So when I did the math on this, it looked like we would probably have to, because 112 million is not the real number. It's really the 15.8, and that's with the furloughs in there. We're looking at probably a $10.8 million. That's not worst case. That's kind of a rubbing it down and trying to, to guess, you know, yeah, off of the, the numbers. If you, give credit, if you give credit for not being 20 or take it to 10 or 12, right. I mean, you pick revenues up for the property taxes, real mm -hmm. property taxes. And, again, if you take out of the 116, 1.1, and say furloughs stay in place, you're at 115. So just subtract whatever number you want in between. Yeah, and that's why – so we're probably right around 105, you know, when we were – 115.8, so that's why I came up with the 10.8. So I say that only so we can leave here in a framed state to know we're going to have to do something pretty big to come up with $10 million. And, and let me say this, too. I, I feel a lot more confident now that we have a chief appraiser on staff mm -hmm. in the numbers that we're going to receive. And I'm not taking seeing anything bad about the people that, that have – given us these numbers that we're basing the budget on, but I do have a lot of confidence in the, the person that we have now. I know when Mike Bush uh, indicated earlier that we had had projections of 8.6 when it was an increase in a digest and it ended up he was always conservative. It may be 8.8, .8, but you never had any surprises of it being 7.2. Mm -hmm. rather than 8.6, that kind of issue. So uh, I, I, when those numbers and those projections come within a couple of weeks, and I know we're, we're on schedule, we're not behind yet, but we'd be quick to get behind, uh, we can see a lot clearer on what we're going to need to do as far as making adjustments to lower the level of service to a particular level or increase a millage or whatever the case may be to address the shortfall. But I, I will feel more confident. 
Well, there's no doubt. I mean, I could wait till April 20th and walk in here and tell you we got the real number and it's 15% if it turns that way, and you probably want to throw me out the window. So what I'm trying to do today is say, if I hear 15%, it's, this is what I'm hearing. If it turns out to be 10, you know, although it isn't going to be great, it's better than 15. But again, the starting point for everybody right now is we're not going to have a lot of time within the next 30 days to sit here and figure out what we've got to do to get where we got to get. It's, again, it's a process that is not the budget. It is to say, what if? That's all it is. It's just a what if. And I don't think it'd be fair to sit here till April 20th and we got to go ahead and call a call a meeting to say, okay, adopt. And here's what we turned out to be. And if it turns out to be that worst case, then we're in trouble. And if it turns out to be better, just as easy right now to say, good. We're not going to do any of those things. We're going to land here, and that's what we're going to run with. I, I applaud you for the approach that you've taken because this is what the board asked for. It gives you several scenarios and the way to address the issue. It, it, it tells you what the worst case scenario is going to be and what the, the, the severity of the cuts in each department and anywhere along, along the way. So no, I think that, that part of it's good. I just like verification on some of those numbers. Commissioner Holder, this tournament this weekend is called a Super NIT. And that organization, whoever puts that tournament on, is the one who gets those registration fees. Mm -hmm. We just rent that field mm -hmm. to that tournament. So you are, you're right, 400 teams, thousand dollars a team, you know, bunch of money. We see none of that. We get whatever it costs to rent that field for the weekend. We we have some indirect benefits because correct. of the hotel motel bed tax mm -hmm. and also the sales tax that while they're correct. here. We, so we that that's all, it's we also good for had, the economy. We also had 131 thousand dollars in rents last year. Not thirty-five thousand. It was one hundred and thirty-one thousand, which includes renting of those fields, the renting of the properties down at the Locust Grove Rec Center, the I think it was an old pharmacy or something right back there, or, or insurance company. That's the thirty thousand dollar piece I think you're talking about. But yeah, we had one hundred and thirty-one thousand dollars of the rents last year. Uh, the cutting of the grass that you asked about, twenty employees that we have doing that currently. Twenty. Twenty. Um, yeah. And again, these are just little things that. Angie's able to get to me from when you're asking these questions, but we'll provide them in an email to you based on questions that are asked. I wish you would verify the 20 employees because. Um, email he responded. And those are designated grass cutters, not park managers or anything, but designated lawn maintenance people because remember, Tim's not over public buildings and all, and his crew has to take care of that. Right. From the courthouse to the jail to a lot of the eliminations, a lot of the elim eliminations that recreation took last year did not include the grass cutters at that time. Some of them were, and they may have moved somebody from, I mean, I don't know, an admin staff to somebody who's cutting grass. I don't know, but I know he, he has to maintain those fields and he's got to use whatever he's got. He may be using some people to do two things. I don't, I don't know. Part -time people. Well, for the last few years during the season when the grass is actually growing, he didn't really have that many right. quote unquote full time seasonal. grass cuts. That's right, they're called seasonal employees, and he does use a good many of them. And Mr. Arlette, I know that in, in an, um, an effort to be as proactive as possible and, and uh, get this uh, budget where it needs to be, you are forming a committee. Would you like to share that with the board? Yes, I would. Um, have discussions with um, uh, commissioners and discuss with them a desire I have to create a citizens budget review committee or panel whichever way you'd like to call it but and, and at this point I've asked uh, each commissioner to uh, provide me with three names um, at this point I will I have a little tiny bio if you need, need that as well or I can just give the names um, and just so the public understands that these are the people that I'm going to pull together with my staff and go over the same thing we talked about, let them provide their input and understanding of what it is, um, and at the same time, from an awareness standpoint of what all this process is that we're going through, the ramifications, the implications of what it is that we're working through, an understanding, if you would, of exactly where their tax dollars go as an assistance to understand for the public because they're these are the type of people that are going to be out in the community to assist in talking about it or getting questions or issues that are raised from this meeting and future meetings. My intent is to have a meeting on um, tomorrow at 3.30 with this, this group, uh, first meeting. I'm trying to have three meetings 
Uh, tomorrow will be a, a meeting to uh, introduce what we've gone over today. Um, we may get the same questions again on parks and recs and whatever. Uh, we'll be prepared by the second meeting as we will for you on many others. So, um, And again, as I said earlier, uh, to Commissioner Holder, the intent now is to take the actual budgets with the actual line items for labor, benefits, everything else, and say here's the number of bodies in this column, this, and this, and this, and sit down with each one of them and um, talk to them from the standpoint of the realities of those things needing to be done to make that number, or are there other things that can be done to avoid some of those draconian cuts. Um, along those lines, uh, uh, the members of this committee that I have, um, as far as um, by district, um, District 1, Ralph Thomas. Um, I can read a little bio. I'll read the names in the absence of time or whatever uh, be your choice. Names would be fine. Pardon me? The names, just the names. Just the names, okay. Uh, Robert Thomas, uh, Barbara Price, and, and Commissioner Preston, have you got your third name? I didn't get it yet. I apologize. Yeah, yeah. I, that was District 1, though, correct? Yeah. I'm sorry. District 1 is Warren. Mr. Holder, I'm sorry. I do not have the third one yet. Um, I will have it. It probably won't be by tomorrow. but uh, By tomorrow. Okay. Well, at this point, uh, I've had Janine calling these people to make sure they're aware of tomorrow's meeting. And um, if you do get a hold of them and they can show up, just let us know. Or when they get there, just let us know. Um, District 2, I think I was missing one until, and, I, and it came I don't in. Know if you need I didn't know that I was still missing District 1. Apologize. Uh, Arlie Lowe, Brian Strickland, and Al Hosford for District 2. District 3, Rhonda Clark, Dale Rutledge, Mike Elrod. District 4, Gary Harkin, Bill Herndon, Kenneth Kelly. District 5, Sahar Hikmaki, uh, Vincent Beezer, and Darius Patillo. I hope I'm not butchering these names. Um, Chairman, uh, Tommy Kennedy, Gene Morris, Dan Judson, and Charles Mobley, and myself, I put uh, four on it, uh, Jim Lee, Wayne Bender, Larry Stanley, and Charlie Tomlinson. There'll be a complete list will be about 23 names when we get the uh, last one from uh, Commissioner Holder. Fred, can, I, can you tell them where that meeting will be? That's going to be in the community room or executive conference room or whatever the name is over conference there. Conference room B. B. Conference room B. I get them all mixed up. I just be told where to go. There will be, there'll be signage, I'm sure, uh, pointing people in that direction. Are there any other questions or comments before um, we adjourn the meeting, no, Mr. Stamey? Well, I just want to tell you, and Mike, thank you for all this information. I think we, we all keyed in on different things, but one thing that kind of stood out to me, particularly being the real estate side, was the the amount of parcels that's under the $250,000 value now. And um, when you take 54,500 properties in our county and right at 51,000 of those are valued below 250, our, ribbon, our river, river that we had of revenue is turned into a creek because there is no revenue stream based upon those values, those property dropping. So that was pretty eye-opening. And, and I, I commend you, for, first of all, for putting it on the air. So this is some great information for everybody to get out. So thank you Appreciate for both it. of you. I need to give credit to the staff. They, they've worked these numbers for years. A lot of it was history. They were able to pull together or already had. I was just blessed to have them. Uh, I'm blessed with the staff I have to, to get all these things done and pull them together. And long hours they've worked to, to help me to get to the Some great process. information to get out. Together, so. It is, I appreciate yeah, that. Very, very good information. And uh, lest we think that we are an island unto ourselves, these are the same conversations that are going on not only in Henry County but across the state and uh, across the nation. So we've all um, – this it's a, it's a worldwide recession. It's not just something that's uh, unique to Henry County. And so we're going to do what we do best. That's to continue to provide quality services to our citizens. And um, – we're going to make the best decisions that we can to make sure Henry County stay, stays strong and safe and stable. And I appreciate all the work that y'all have put into this and look forward to getting the report back from the citizens' meetings that start tomorrow. Mr. Bowman? I think it's important to uh, – I know that we've said it before, and I think it's important to say it again that, uh, you know, due to the floating homestead exemption that's on the county portion, that it, our – Tax Digest basically is is froze. It'll be froze at the 
105, 107, whatever that number is. You know, the school board didn't. Uh, the others are not, but the, the county portion of it is froze. And, uh, you know, when the economy does come back, and hopefully it will, when the economy does come back, the county portion will still be in a problem. There'll still be a problem for the county as far as that's concerned, which will, uh, you know, other than properties that are sold after the economy does turn around. So I think it's important to understand that this is not a situation that would go away next year or the year after that or the year after that because the properties that are revalued at the 105, 106, they don't go back up. They don't go up even for the county portion, you know, because I've had a number of people say, well, uh, if it doesn't go back up, why did mine go up? Well, it went up because certain ones are not signed on to that. Only, only the county portion of that money is. So there's, you know, this is not just a one-time thing or a one-year thing. This is something that we're going to have to deal with for quite some time. Well, I think our legislators, too, um, didn't help the situation when they passed those laws at the state level that said you must use foreclosures and bank sales in the valuation of your property. And I don't think from a real estate standpoint that that has ever been the case in, value, in valuing property until in their infinite wisdom they felt like that was a good thing to do and, and it has basically destroyed property values across the state. Well Amen. the fact is it was actually illegal to use them up until just a couple of years ago. You could not use a distress sale or a foreclosure or any type of sale like that in an appraisal report. When they changed that the only thing, you know obviously that's where the only sales are. The only, my, my issue with them on that was why didn't they take and weigh in the cost to replace, replacement costs, because everybody knows that you can you can buy a house now cheaper than you can buy the builder package. And so, you know, to say that a $130,000 house is only worth $130,000 when, when the builder package was probably more than that at one time, uh, it just it doesn't make any sense. And in their haste to try and resolve certain issues, they didn't take into effect the cost approach. And there should have been... I'm not saying use only the cost approach. I'm saying they should have used that as a weight in order to weight the appraisal so that it wouldn't have brought it all the way back up, but it would have, it would have put it more in, in line with what the actual value is. Along those lines, I think last year we had a couple of um, builders who came forward and wanted to make some uh, variances uh, to their subdivisions to get started in building and I think in both of the cases I recall anyways both of them said they had to have the value of that house at about $150,000 as far as the building and that's because of the cost of the little bit of margin that they were claiming that was in there so again um, those, those size houses are about probably what we're talking about here that are now at 127 or maybe less. One little comment to add to that Fred is uh, Michael, you probably see a little bit of growth on starts this year opposed to last year. I think I looked at it a while back, and it, just just for number, this ain't an accurate number. Let's say we had 30 starts in January, building starts last January. We might have had 50 in January this year. We, so we're getting more starts. The problem is that lot that was a $50,000 value is now a $20,000 value, and you you put an improved property on there. You put you put $150,000 worth of improvement. You got $170,000 worth of value. How long is it going to take you to make up a half a billion dollars in account building two hundred thousand dollars houses? So that's that's going to it's going to show a little bit of growth, but it's going to take forever to get that value back. Again, I I, I just want to end from my standpoint for everybody, and I keep saying this, and I want to make sure everybody understands yourselves, the public, the, the employees of the county. This is a process. That's all this is, is a process. It is a, it's something between when we started this a couple of weeks ago to today to where we end up at the end. There's no foregone conclusions to any of this. There's moving numbers, as Mike will tell me every day. You know, the property taxes, as you heard, are moving numbers. Some of this other stuff may be moving. But at the end of the day, the service departments we have are pretty much in place and either desired to be retained and kept at the levels we have or whatever other levels that will come out of this at the end, but it's a process with no foregone conclusion on our part. We're presenting what we believe at this point, best case, worst case, and again, working with each of the department heads to, to present those numbers. 
So basically, somebody gets on Facebook tonight and it says the county is eliminating 68 police officers and closing three fire stations and laying off 15 firefighters. That is not true. No, it is not. That it is, is a not process true. of understanding, and that's all it is. <laughs> Mr. Holder. Did I understand you correctly in saying that the, the calculations were based on the reductions and the projections of reductions in, in the commercial industrial area, but no growth, I mean, that, you, that no growth had been factored in? As of this point, they have started to factor in what little growth there is. We, we went from 10.89% reduction to 11.75% reduction, but in the industrial and commercial line items, let's say they were at 9 and this time they were at 8.8. .8. That's a increase, or it's a less of a decrease, but it's because we had a little bit of growth coming in. They still have some more growth coming in, but you're talking fractions of a percent versus whole percents that it's going backwards. I, I can understand that, but just just for the sake of it, mm -hmm. and, and I'm going to use some examples. Granted that you, the industrial property may go down some in value, but it is still improved in commercial and industrial property. So there is a, a base already established on on that property. Let me give you some examples. Track to supply, even though that's just a fraction. Track to supply will be coming on this year because it didn't open until mid-year last year. The new Walmart at Locust Grove. Um, over a million square foot uh, warehouse, Georgia Pacific's going up right now out on West Ridge. Uh, and, you can look around and see that there are commercial developments that are starting to grow. And with nothing factored in from raw land to here's a revenue producing commercial establishment, that in itself will, will not necessarily offset all of the negatives, but it will certainly help to diffuse some of the, the loss. So I just. What? Before we actually pull the, the, the trigger, we need to see what some of that, that, fact, that growth factor is. Again, into Commissioner Holder, we're not pulling any triggers. I, we are providing you with the data so you can figure which we, trigger you want to pull. We've got to pull the trigger I before the June the 1st, by I, May the 30th. I understand. That's um, right. To that point, I was just using, uh, I was trying to get the number before I came, and I, I thought it was $20 million on a particular project that's that's come to the county, but again, it won't be on this year's digest because by the time they build it, it'll be next year. But to the point of a million square feet that you're talking about, I believe that was about a $20 million project. And just calculating that out, we had put that somewhere in the chart in there. Um, again, looking at that at the 40% times the millage and whatever else. Just roughly in my mind, I'm going to say it'll generate two to $300,000 in tax. Well, most, there it is right there. Uh, it's 90. If you take a $20 million okay. investment and you take 40% uh, value, forget homestead or forget exemptions of any, uh, the millage at 11 and uh, 75 is 94000 to the county. It's 188000 to the school district at the 23.62, which is the 20 plus their bond issue, bond uh, millage. The total, forgetting all the other stuff for water and all that stuff, is $282,000. But again, we, the county, are only going to get 94 of that 282 that's up there. Obviously, it's going to always be a 60 to 65, 30, 40, right. 35, 40 split. The school system is going to always get two to one or close to it what, what the county gets. That's just, and that's true not in Henry County, and that's, but all over the state. But, it, but it, nevertheless, that's $300,000 or $280,000 that's coming to Henry County when that exactly. comes on board. So. It would be nice if the school gives us that. So we need we need more of that. And, but I'm just saying there are some of those activities that are occurring. Yes, there are. Any other and again, it comes back to what we've got to do to go ahead and bring those here for economic development, which some dialogue's been had and working in various meetings uh, with Development Authority and other people have been going on the last couple of weeks as well to try to encourage that. Any other questions or comments? Um, if there's no further business to come before the board, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion by Mr. Stamey, second by Mr. Preston. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. We stand adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>